welcome to our second edition of Caribbean Conversation. As we promised last time, we were going to talk about Lost Island. So today, um, we have a special guest with us, and her name is Grace Andrews. She works for a startup based in Portland, and she specializes in Afro-Latino cultures. So she's going to be a great addition to today, today's show. Say hi to everyone, Grace. Hi, everyone. And we also have Katie, who you met last week in Vancouver. So we're going to get started in just a minute, but we want all of you to turn off your phones and just listen to the show. We don't want any cheating because we're going to ask you a couple quiz questions later. And Katie's going to kick us off. All right. So welcome to Lost Islands. And when we think of Lost Islands, we think of the Caribbean. And it's important to actually define what the Caribbean is. There are many islands which make up the Caribbean region, and these islands span from the tip of Florida in the United States all the way to Guyana, Aruba, Bonnier, Curacao. So it's essentially a chain of islands, and these islands are divided by the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. So you have the Bahamas, the Greater Antilles, the Lesser Antilles. Now, within all these groups, there are even smaller groups. So you have independent states, you have colonial dependencies, and you have associated states as well. So the Caribbean is really a complex um, range of islands. And when we talk about lost islands, all these um, various islands, they have to come into play. So in terms of the Caribbean, we also have to think about the Caribbean versus the West Indies. So um, for most people, we would say that um, all the islands in the West Indies are in the Caribbean, but not all the islands in the Caribbean are in the West Indies. So that's also something to think about as we go into our Lost Islands segment. Thank you, Katie. All right, so Grace in Portland is going to give us a couple of quiz questions about the Caribbean region, and at the end of this show, we'll reveal the answers. Okay, great. Take it away. Thank you for that, Katie. That was a great introduction to my questions. Um, these quiz questions are going to be fun, lively, exciting, and most importantly, educational while being entertaining. So our first question is, what Caribbean island has the first female pre prime minister who is also known as the Iron Lady of the Caribbean? Our next question is, Despite this island's small population, it has given us some of the best cricketers of the world, including Sir Vivian Richards, Richie Rick Roberts. There seems to be a trend of our names right there. Um, and also Curtly Ambrose, who mixes it up a little because his surname is not one that begins with an R. I know the answer to that one, Grace. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, can you tell me now, or do you have to wait till the end, too? I think I have to wait until the end. Okay, okay. keep going. So, the next question is, this is the only foreign place that former President George Washington ever visited. Um, and, you know, I use former president loosely, because that was <laughs> literally 270 years ago. So, loose, loosely. Um, next question is, this island, which is a tiny little baby island, um, despite having a population, don't be sad for the island because they had 176,000 citizens, but they had two Nobel Prize winners. That's, oh, okay, little baby island, all that talent. And what islands speak the language of Papamiento? Hmm. And that's all I've got for you, Shadisha. Okay, very cool. I think I know two out of the five. What do you think, Katie? How many do you know? I think I, I think I have three down. I have three down. You have at least three down. Okay. All right. Well, I'll be honest, so, I have all the answers because I cheat. Exactly. So, <laughs> and we're the one with the questions. So, That's obviously, right. you know all the answers. I can answer all these questions. So, so <laughs> the first thing I want to mention before we get started is where this, this terminology, West Indies, comes from. The Caribbean region was discovered by Christopher Columbus. However, I don't know how you discover something that was already there, but maybe that's a different discussion for a different show. <laughs> he was sailing to get to India, 
known as the East Indies. He never made it to India. Instead, he ended up in the Caribbean. So the Caribbean was given this misnomer of the West Indies. And we continue to use that today. So the region is also known as the West Indies, in addition to being known as the Caribbean. And that's what Katie talked about a little bit earlier. So when we think about the Caribbean region, um, when we say that to most people, they think of some of the bigger islands. They think of Jamaica and Trinidad, even Barbados. But there are a ton of other islands in the Caribbean. If I'm not mistaken, Katie, are there about 700 islands in the Caribbean, or or is it even more? Yeah, it's like about 700 islands and islets, and like I think only two percent is like inhabited right now, which is exactly. And you know, there are also those special islands, you know, that celebrities own, like little tiny mm -hmm. islands, close to other islands. So I don't know if those are considered inhabited or not. And they're probably only there. Can we buy one? Huh? Can we buy one? You can absolutely buy one. I know there are tons of them around the Bahamas. Um, mm -hmm. It'll cost you a pretty penny, but I know you can definitely buy them. Yeah. So, anyway, do you know the process of buying an island? Because that seems a little counterintuitive that you can buy something that is technically a, if it's an archipelago, it's probably some sort of like natural protection law around it, right? Because it's going to have unique plant and animal species, but that's probably for another conversation. And then secondly, who governs it if you buy it? I think it's still technically a part of the country itself. That is definitely another show. That is that is going to be our environmental show and possibly when we talk about ecosystems. So hold that thought and we'll bring you back. We'll bring you back, Grace. All right. So what I the question I want to ask both of you to really kick this off is when you think of lost islands as it pertains to the Caribbean, what islands do you think of? Or what are some islands that, that you know of that um, most people have never heard of? Katie, do you want to kick us off? Sure. I would love to. Okay, so, you know, I have to do this. Um, you know, I have to represent my flag. Um, so this primarily is the first country I think of. I think of Dominica because... Um, I've been in a lot of situations where um, I've met people from the Caribbean and I've been like, said, hi, yeah, I'm from Dominica. And they stare at me with these blank stares. And I stare back because, you know, I, I expect them to know, you know, because of ge Caribbean geography and stuff like that. And they still don't know where my country, where my island is. And I think for me, I think of countries like Dominica. Antigua, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, just to name a few, right? Where people probably know about it, maybe because of the cruises or whatever, but they, they, I don't know if they think that we just like exist like in, in an imaginary land. But for me personally, I just think these are the islands I think of. I think of islands that don't have a small, they have a really small population. Not a lot of people will travel. Like, and they call us the smallies, you know, small island people. And, you know, we, we represent that name well. Um, although I don't really appreciate it all the time, but I think it's just, you know, recognizing that, you know, there are other islands out there, even if we're not dependencies or territories, but we are independent states. That's what I think of when I think of Lost Islands. Okay. Grace, what about you? You know, to kind of piggyback off what Katie said, when I think of the Lost Islands, I definitely think of the Lesser Antilles. Like, that's just automatically where my mind goes. So, Carousel, Aruba, um, and Bonaire. And so, and you know, I just discovered Bonaire, like, 25 minutes ago. So, and I feel like I'm really educated about the Lost Islands. And here's an island that I still didn't know about, right? And, you know, when she, in the beginning, we all talked about how there's 700 islands, islets, reefs, all of these different sorts of physical landscapes where people can live, and I don't think it ever really, really connects. It's like there are a lot of islands, and there are people who live, work, raise families, go to school on these islands. And when you think of the West Indies, it almost becomes like a conglomerate of territories that is like one country, but it's not. These are all countries with their own histories. It's really important to remember that. And for me, I definitely, I think of the Dutch-speaking islands. Um, everyone forgets that there are Dutch-speaking islands who are still speaking Dutch today. And uh, I love that level of obscurity, but I wish it was a little bit more integrated into just general Caribbean knowledge. Like Katie's saying, you'll meet West Indians who don't know 
about Curacao. They're like, what's that? It's like, that's an island. That is your neighbor. You need to know what's going on there, right? So I think that level of um, disconnect happens at a greater level when it's a non-Anglophonic island. Because people, or if it's non-Spanish speaking, everyone assumes like Spanish, English, but no one ever thinks Dutch or Portuguese. And so I think they definitely get left out of the mix. Okay. Great, great. You brought up a great point, and um, I was just actually about to talk about um, language and how that plays into islands being lost. Um, and, and I think that's a huge component because I've even heard people say they don't think of Haiti when they think of the Caribbean. And I, I, that always baffles me. I think sometimes it may have something to do with language. It probably has a lot to do with a lot of other things too, but it's not a country they think of immediately. And then if we think about some other regions that are considered a part of the Caribbean community, um, what have you, like a Guyana, you know, they are a part of South America, but we do look at them as a part of the, the greater West Indies. And I think a lot of the reason why is because they speak English. You know, if they were a Spanish-speaking country, then it would be a different classification because they would be... Um, included in greater South America. I think Guyana gets forgotten a lot of times. I, I think Haiti gets forgotten not as a country itself, but it's just not thought of when you think of the rest of the Caribbean for some reason. I've noticed that a lot. So, Katie, what role do you think language plays in all of this? I think language is very important, and not just language itself, but even dialect, you know? Because I think a lot of people think that um, when you're from the Caribbean, for example, I've had experiences where I'm in North America and people talk to me in with Jamaican dialect, and they just assume that I, I connect with that, that I understand that. And I think it's just, just perception that all people in the Caribbean speak a, a specific way that they have, you know, one language. And in terms of when you think of Guadeloupe and Martinique and Aruba, when you're concerned, that language can bring people together and it can also divide them as well. And going back to colonialism, the whole um, different sex, um, different sections, different languages, there is still that, you know, innate division there. And I think once we start to categorize the Car entire Caribbean as English speaking, as like, countries will eventually, you know, fit. they'll fade, right? They'll end up in the shadows. And I think it's just important for us to try to connect with them, maybe try to learn their language, try to learn their dialect a little bit. Because, for example, in my country, yes, we speak English, but we also speak French Creole, and we also speak Kokoi, right? And these are some languages that people probably have never heard or they don't even know about. So I think it's just trying to connect with those countries on that level. And just like showing them that we're trying, and then once they see we, we put some effort into it, I think that will kind of bring us a bit closer. Katie, honestly, the last language you just mentioned, I have never heard of. And I pride myself on knowing a lot of different things and a lot of different languages uh, <laughs> uh, in particular, but I've never heard of it. And look, look at that, you know? Right now, this dialogue is educating all of us. Grace just learned about Bonaire, so <laughs> hopefully, this, this conversation will, will prompt other conversations so people can explore um, and learn more about these other islands, and not just islands, some are on mainland of continents, but learn more about these other regions, and hopefully someday go visit those places. Right. Grace, I do, I do want you to come in, but I just want to throw this out as well. Um, what do we think about the, the actual education system in the Caribbean, where people may not have heard about these islands in school, you know, what's going on there? I, I can't speak to the education system in the Caribbean because I was not educated in the Caribbean, obviously. So I, you know, I'm limited there. But what I will say is part of the problem with how we all are educated, right, um, is that we start to think that one word means the same thing for everyone. And the anthropologist in me just needs to say this, is a Creole or a Patois is a derivative of a language. Mm -hmm. So someone can say, I speak Creole, and people are like, oh, you must be Haitian if they have any level of awareness. But there are many Creoles in many places outside of the West Indies as well. And if you speak a Patois, you can speak, you know, I'm Ghanaian by heritage, and we have a Patois that we speak that's a broken English, but it's not the same as 
what is spoken in the islands, any of the islands, let alone Jamaica, let alone, you know, um, Martinique, let alone anywhere. It's going to be different because of the regional and cultural influences that are going to come in into the language that is going to change what it is. And I and I think people hear Creole or they hear Patois or they hear Pidgin and they assume, oh, oh, it's just like mine, right? And that's why, Katie, somebody will roll up on you speaking Jamaican Patois because they're like, oh, oh, yeah, no, or speaking Haitian Creole because they're like, oh, I heard Creole. And they can go for it um, instead of recognizing that these are terms that describe overarching things in language. Um, and, I, and I bet that's also part of the educational problem, right? You start using these umbrellas as if it describes everything and everyone instead of breaking it down. People are always like the West Indies, the Caribbean, the West Indies. The Car no one ever takes the time to like actually name a country anymore. And I don't know if they did in the past, but in the present, it's like where are you going on vacation? The West Indies, the Caribbean. I'm taking a Caribbean cruise. We just learned that 700 islands. Which one are you going to, right? So I think that that's a part of, you know, not necessarily the education in the Caribbean, but just the education about the Caribbean outside of it. Well, Absolutely. Great point. Oh, Katie, jump in. Yeah, like in terms of education in the Caribbean, because I did attend school in the Caribbean, I would say that because I was in a smaller country, um, I think they made a greater effort to teach us about the other countries in the Caribbean. Because I think when you're in that situation, it's in your best interest to know about, you know, the wider islands that are out there. And I don't want to speak for the larger countries, but I feel like um, the people I've met from larger countries, uh, especially in the Great Antilles, they don't have the same type of knowledge that we have in terms of the... Because, because their countries have so much, I guess, maybe they have more people, so they have more um, issues to, to deal with, I guess, in terms of that, more history. I don't have time, I think, to go in depth um, to talk about the others, the smaller countries in the Caribbean. So I think that's something we need to think about in our education system. Because guess what? If we don't, if if we are all from the same Caribbean region, and we go to North America, and you still don't know that I am a part of your Caribbean community, then that's just awkward, and that's just sad, you know. And it's just embarrassing because I've been in that situation before. And I just had to, you know, keep it cool, stay calm, be like, okay, I'll just educate you later, and then let's just, because, you know, it, it does get embarrassing, and it does get awkward, and I think that's something that we have to start with. Like, you know, charity begins at home, right? So teach people about the smaller Caribbean islands, because you know, we matter, too. You know, this is a very emotional topic for me. Oh, well, Katie, thank you so much. And taking it back to the organization, to Caribbean Returning Nationals, that's the whole point for all of the islands in the region and the territories for us to connect so we get to know each other. And going back to our discussion from last week, how do we get young people in the diaspora to engage? First, we have to unite before we can engage everyone. I mean, I should be able to engage someone from any region of the Caribbean, but first I have to know that that's a place. I have to know that I should be looking for those people. And if I know what language they speak, then I can assume that they may live in certain places. If we want to engage people from Bonaire or from Aruba, we should be marketing or we should try to find a coordinator for our organization, somebody that is based potentially in the Netherlands, because that is how we can then get to those people. So, I mean, it, it, the, the greater conversation, too, is who is our market? You know, who, who are we trying to reach? And as an organization like this, we should be reaching everyone in the greater Caribbean. And this is this is one way that we can connect people as well because you may not realize that your neighbor is someone that is from the Caribbean because you hear them speaking Dutch because you're assuming that they should be speaking English or you're assuming that they should be Spanish. I just want to really allude to the embarrassment that Katie just shared with you. My best friend, and I'm going to send her this video. So hello, Jamila. Hi, and Jamila. She's Guyanese, right, which is a CARICOM nation, but is a part of the subcontinent of South America, next to Venezuela and Brazil. Um, so they are geographically South American, but they are culturally, they identify, and economically as a Caribbean nation, right, and they're even a part of the Caribbean Commonwealth. I am from Ghana. I am Ghanaian. And all throughout undergraduate, and even now, people are like, oh, you're South American? And I am proud that they think that. But the actual statement should be, oh, you're Caribbean? 
because as an identity, right? Not just South American. It's you're, oh, you're a Caribbean. That should be if they were even right about anything in the statement of who I was by geographic birth. That's how they would come at me. But they don't know, right? They assume Ghana and Guyana and Guinea are all the same place. They're like it starts with a G. It has an A in it. I think there's an un somewhere in the sound of the word. I'm like, where are you going with this? So here we are, you know, people who think that maybe they even have a grasp on geography are off by continents. And once again, and like Katie said, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna say to someone, especially a, someone from the Caribbean, like wrong country in front of mixed company. I'm gonna wait until we're together and be like, yo, so you know I'm not Guyanese, right? <laughs> Right, so I just, but that's so, but, and we're laughing about it because I think there's a there's an element of humor to it, but it becomes about all of the diaspora understanding where all of the diaspora comes from, right? It's embarrassing if someone rolls up on me and is like, "There's no African speaking African country that speaks Spanish." I'm like, "Oh, there are, there's some, but they don't recognize that, right? Or they're like, there's none that speak like German or Dutch. And I'm looking at them like, what kind of bootleg African are you? You're coming up in here telling people lies. And it's not because people don't um, want to know. I think they just assume that they do know because they're from that region. And that level of assumption is really, really dangerous because I think it keeps you from identifying the knowledge that you're missing and how to get it. Um, okay. So that's, I just wanted to throw that out there, that, that level of embarrassment, I share it with you. I'm just like, why is this happening right now, and why is no one correcting anyone else? It's hard well, to I'll, I'll share my little anecdote. Yes, I was born in Jamaica, but as you all know, well, the two of you know, and some of you watching this video, my dad is from Grenada. So I tried very hard to educate people about Grenada, and I know both of you are laughing because this is like an inside joke that I never talked about Grenada, but that's not true. If you know me, you know at least two facts about Grenada. But when I bring up Grenada, particularly in America, um, people either have never heard of it or their, their next comment will be, oh, we invaded them back in the 80s, right? And I, that is just not the association that I would want for Grenada, but obviously countries also do pick up different stigmas and different stereotypes. And right now we've been talking about the issues, but in conversations we should also talk about how we change this, how, how we can make this different. So what can we do um, to help the Lost Islands get some shine, help people learn about the Lost Islands? So, Grace is smiling, so I think she's ready to, to share something with her innovative mind there. So Grace, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are find the things you love and then seek out information about those islands concerning that subject matter. So the example I'm going to use is music and dance. For folks who know me, I love to dance. I love to explore different types of music, and that's a great way to do it. Maybe you should identify one artist from every Caribbean country, and you should listen to them. So then you're going to get exposure to some of the languages. You're going to get exposure to some of the, the cultural themes that might be present on the island. And you're also going to get exposure to maybe local dances, um, and you're just going to have a good time. How enjoy how enjoying is it to just like listen to music or watch music videos? There's so many websites that try to show you music videos from other countries, from other cultures. It's easy. It's fun. You're already on the internet watching videos of cats anyway. So you might as well go and watch a video of at least like a Grenadian cat, like dancing to Grenadian music. I don't know. Like, I mean, be creative in the way you search, but I think music and art is such a great way, especially also film. I love a good cheesy film from like a small island. I'm about that life. Or even investigating who your favorite like Caribbean artists are and where they come from. There's a lot of people who are actors in North America who have Caribbean lineage from really great I lost islands that you can just do a, a real quick Google search or Wikipedia search and be like, oh, this person's West Indian. Oh, they're from Antigua. Oh, that's so cool, right? And then just using that as a way in which to piggyback from just being entertained to being educated. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Grace. I see Katie smiling. What are your thoughts? Um, for me, I have three things. Um, first of all, because I do a lot of model United Nations, and I've noticed that 
when they call some of the Caribbean islands, they have some very strange pronunciation. Um, <laughs> so apparently there's this standard by which they are, and I always go up to them and I, I, I say, look, no, no, this is not how you pronounce. Like they would say St. Lucia or they would say Antigua or they would say Dominica, like, you know, like these weird pronunciations. So I think it starts with that, first of all, for like the general, just general knowledge. Um, second of all, I think it just starts with the conversation. Like once you, you realize someone got something wrong, as we said, take them aside, give them a good geography lesson, a history lesson, you know, catch them up on, you know, on that word. Because I think it's important, honestly. First of all, I think also in terms of what you said, Grace, about like, you know, Googling people, I like cricket. I'm a huge cricket fan, huge cricket fan. And let me tell you, we had some great cricketers from all over the Caribbean. And I think if you just look at the cricketer, look what country that cricketer is from, do some Googling. You know, it takes, literally takes less than a minute to put, put a country into Google, see where it's from, look at the capital. Because when I was in primary school, we had to know all the Caribbean islands all their capitals, you know what I mean? I don't know if they still do that today, but you know, I'm proud to say I know the capital island of this, the capital city of this island. So I think it's just about Googling. Google is your best friend. Just, you know, we Google so many things every day. Why can't we just take some time to Google Caribbean islands? That's, what, that's just how I see it, you know? That's where I would Google it. And I think everyone okay. watching right now should go and Google like map of the Caribbean. Yes. You can have a visual of the island, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And they're shaped like this. And like find the island you do know. Like maybe you know Jamaica. Great. Go to Jamaica. What islands are around Jamaica? What islands are by Jamaica? What islands are, you know, next to the Dominican Republic? Like go to the islands that you know you know and see what's around them, right? Yeah. Just having the visual of the layout of the land, because a lot of people don't even know. The idea that Southern Florida is the beginning of the Caribbean blew some people's mind about 15 minutes ago. They're like, what? Absolutely. And I, like, um, there's some regions of the world where, where they're unaware that there are islands in between North America and South America. And that is how I have to describe the Caribbean. That'll be another show, but that is how I've had to describe the Caribbean in the past to individuals that are unaware that there are countries in the waters of the Caribbean. So that just, but, just keep that in mind. And um, Katie, come in. You have something to say. Yeah, but Abby, like if we even think of it, about this, right? Like on some maps, even when you look at some world maps, some countries are not even present. Some yeah. islands don't even exist on some maps. I think that in itself is a good. Like as I've seen people with maps, and I'm, I was like, but where's my country? <laughs> it's not. It's yeah. not that confused. Like you know. So I think even that too, which shows how our islands get lost in the. Are shadows. neglected. Are neglected. No, absolutely. I was gonna say in the United States, I don't know about um, other countries, but in the United States, there is Caribbean Heritage Month. There is a month for that, and that is the month of June. And during um, Black History Month in the United States, a lot of people take to social media and they'll put up one interesting fact about Black history. So I encourage all of you from the Caribbean and beyond, this June, and you can start now, we don't have to wait until June, look up one island in the Caribbean and hashtag Caribbean Heritage Month, hashtag the name of that place, and present one fact to us. I think this will be a great way for all of us to learn, for you to learn yourself. And we can just keep the momentum going. You can hashtag the name of the island, Caribbean Heritage Month, hashtag us at Caribbean Conversations as well. So we can know that you're doing your homework and you're learning something about the Caribbean. <laughs> so I'll be looking out for that. I will be looking out for that. I'm going to do it today. I know Grace is smiling. She's probably going to do five of those today. So I'll be looking. I'll definitely be checking out her Instagram and Katie's Instagram um, to see and Facebook to see what information they're presenting us with. Because there's so many fun facts about the Caribbean, and especially if we go into Caribbean history and talk about why the Caribbean speaks all the languages they do, why everyone looks different, um, all of the different uh, uh, immigration patterns that came into the Caribbean. Because I remember just an anecdote when Tessan Chin won um, the boys, people at work were asking me, um, you're Chinese people in Jamaica, how does that work? You don't really get the Asian thing. And um, that was a, 
excellent teaching opportunity for me. And I'm not actually going to teach you right now because that's going to be another show. We need you to come back so you can learn about the diversity of the Caribbean. So um, without further ado, I would like to get into the answers of Grace's questions from earlier. Okay, so are you ready for the answers? What island was the first Caribbean island to have a female prime minister who was known as the Iron Lady of the Caribbean? All right, so the answer to that is da, 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 Dominica, and that is where our wonderful Katie is from. Okay, next Tell us one. What's the, name, what's the name of the Iron Lady of the Caribbean? Oh, her name is, oh, go ahead, Katie. You have the honors. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dame Mary Eugenia Child. That's right. Thank you. All right, great. Number two. Our second question, I believe, was the one about the cricketers of the world. Um, so which island, despite its small population, has some of the best cricketers known to the world? And those cricketers are? Sir Vivian Richards, Richie Richardson, Andy Roberts, and poor old Curly Ambrose with that surname that does not begin with an R. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be the island of Antigua. Ooh. And what is the fun fact about Antigua? Jamaica Kincaid, a very famous author, a lot of you probably know her book, A Small Place, is also from the island of Antigua. Grace, next one. Wait, wait, and also, it's Sir Vivian Richards' birthday, so shout out to Sir Viv Richards. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday! <laughs> Woo! I hope he's watching. Me too. We need to definitely find him on Instagram and let right. him know that we're talking about him. That's right. Go ahead, Grace. All right, so this next question is, despite this island being um, a small island, not, I don't know if it's one of the lost islands per se. It is the only, it's the only place that former President George Washington ever visited. That would be the island of Barbados, Ooh, which is also the homeland of our girl Rihanna. Ooh, child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Riri, I hope you're watching, girl. <laughs> I hope you watch it. You and George Washington have something in common. <laughs> the island of Barbados. Um, the similarities, the similarities. Okay, Grace, next one. So our, I, I believe these are, our, despite having a population of only 176,000 people, this island has two Nobel Prize winners. Who are these people and what is the island? The four of these people part, I think you're asking a lot of our um, audience to know the names of the people, but I know Katie knows, and I'll let her answer this one. Okay, so uh, we have Alpha Lewis, which is economics, and Sir Derek Walcott, which is literature. And these individuals are from the beautiful island of St. Lucia. And why are you so excited about St. Lucia? <laughs> the honeymoon island. <laughs> Oh, because, you know, I have some heritage <laughs> in St. Lucia, so, you know, I have to represent that side as well. Katie's dad is from St. Lucia. I don't know why she's being shy about this, but, okay. <laughs> and last but not least, Grace? So, what countries speak Papamento? Ooh, so that's a fun one. And I try as much as possible to say the name Papimento. I try to name drop it. I just love saying the name Papimento. And the countries that speak this language are Aruba, Bonaire, Grace's new favorite place that she's going to visit, <laughs> and then also Curacao. Um, and it is a combination of African languages, Portuguese, and it also has some Spanish and Dutch influence. So that's, that's, a, that's a, hopefully you've learned something about some of the Dutch speaking islands. Now, we want to thank all of you for watching Lost Islands. And if you have any questions or if we said something that's not 100% correct, call us out. We want everyone to be educated correctly 
if you're from one of these islands, shout us out. Let us know that you're happy we talked about you, or maybe you're not happy. You want us to say more. We definitely want your feedback. Follow us on social media. And again, everyone, use this as an opportunity to teach someone else about a lost island. Put something on your Instagram. Put something on Facebook. And hashtag us at Caribbean Conversation. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye.